We're up to part four of our conversation with Kasim Sultan. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. He was a longtime member of Utopia with Todd Rundgren, also a longtime collaborator with Todd as a solo artist. Played with Joan Jett, The New Cars, Meatloaf, Blue Oyster Cult, Scandal, Hollow Notes, and a lot more. Here's Kasim Sultan. One of my favorite artists, um, not only because of his songs, because I like the, his unique way of singing, is Paul Williams. How do you work <laughs> with Paul Williams? He just sings. No one sounds like I can tell Paul Williams when he's singing. I mean, talk about highlights. Uh, um... Paul and I uh, started wor working together. We are uh, both, I, 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 I don't have to worry about breaking his anonymity because he, he is uh, he's very vocal about it. Uh, both Paul and I are in long-term recovery and uh, um, we, we were involved in a project that uh, was raising awareness for um, the 15 million people in this country that are in long-term recovery and dealing with uh, and helping other people with substance abuse and, uh, substance abuse and addiction issues. Um, Paul was, was uh, contacted by, the, uh, by this gentleman by the name of Greg Williams who put this whole show together that we did in 2014 in Washington, D.C., um, and it was a trip. We, we wrote a song together along with people in the recovery community. Um, and, uh, and so Paul and I, uh, came up with, um, with this track called, um, uh, the voice of change. And, uh, yeah, it was just really cool. Paul and I are, 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 are good friends and man, I, he's, he's amazing. He is a really, really amazing person. And I am proud and honored to call him a friend speaking of your dad you uh, when he told you you have to go to school or or get a job well that, you did do, you did do some research it's part of the product man it's, it's, it's all part of the service but when he told you that at that point this is the part i forget because i was just listening to this interview just before i always try to watch an interview with anyone i do just to sort of get a feel for them uh -huh. just to say okay i'm not going to be able to ask him that i always do anyway but or whatever right. the, the thing is. Um, when he said that to you, was that around the Utopia time when it started or had it started? No, yet? I was I was 17 uh, at that time, I was 17 or 18. I, I may, maybe I was 18 um, or maybe, maybe even 19. I, I, I don't know. I was out of high school. Um, I had tried college for uh, a half a year. That didn't work. I was not a student. I, I just was. I was never good in school. Um, and uh, and he, uh, I was playing in bands. I mean, maybe I made you know fifty bucks here and ten bucks there and twenty five bucks here. Um, and he was, uh, and I was, you know, eighteen or nineteen years old. And he's like, "It's time for you to get a job." You know, and if 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 you're if you're not in school and you don't have a job, we have a problem. Um, and, and I'm like, uh, you know, job. Oh, no. Uh, I thought I had a job and that was to become rich and famous. Um, <laughs> still working on it. Uh, but um, so so I, uh, I, I, you know, just the stars aligned and and the universe was kind enough to me to. Um, to, uh, to afford me an opportunity that I parlayed into a career. Uh, but it, I was down to the wire. I was definitely on my, my dad's last nerves. And, uh, and then all of a sudden I started making more money than him. And, uh, and, and that was okay. That was okay for a minute. When you auditioned for that band, you were a guitar player and decided that you'd sell your guitar to be a bass player. Were they, were they brothers you had said before? Were they brothers in that band? Yeah. Yeah. The Rayo brothers. So, um, so let me interrupt you for a second. So this is such a good story. And I've always, now and then I'll hear something and I'll go, no, no, we got to tell this story again, because it's an important, uh, my wife used to sell two, $3 million houses. And one day she looked at me, I said, how can you cold call, man? How can you do that? And she said, oh, no, no, no. I changed my paradigm. I get paid for rejection. So I go uh -huh. in there and I, my, my, my paradigm's completely changed. Okay. But if you tell someone in music, part of the large part of the music industry, you're going to get rejected. You're going to be humiliated. And if you yeah. get shamed in any way, you'll make sure that never happens again. All those beautiful mother statement lessons. But um, so 
tell, tell us that story about playing with those those brothers. I, I mean, I was about 13 years old and I was in uh, at 13. I think you're in middle school. Yeah. So I was in the eighth grade. Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, just the halfway through the all, almost all the way through all the way through the eighth grade. And um, and these uh, I, I Staten Island, New York at, at that time was a very, very rural place. It was uh, mostly woods uh, and, and mom and pop stores and drive-in movie theaters. Um, uh, it, it, yeah, and just uh, about as far from a, a city as you can get while still living in the city. They started um, developing Staten Island because uh, as cities do they spread and um, and they started putting up row houses in Staten Island and uh, and then they built the Verrazano Narrows Bridge, which connected Brooklyn to Staten Island and all the uh, the the masses of people in Brooklyn that prior to that had to take a ferry to get to Staten Island. Um, now there was a bridge. So you had this mass influx of, uh, of people from Brooklyn, which was a crowded borough, to Staten Island, which was kind of like living in the country, it, it, but st yet still in the city. So about three blocks from where uh, my, my folks' house is, they started putting up these row houses, which is like the ha same house after house after house after house. And it was all these people from Brooklyn that moved in. And these kids, these brothers, the, the Rayo brothers, John and, and, and Robert Rayo, um, were guitar players. They, they, they wound up in the same school as me. Did they get um, a reputation for being good pretty fast? Yeah, were they out there? Yeah. Uh -huh. they, were, they were hot shot guitar players. And, and they also dressed very well. So, um, so the, 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 the younger brother was in the same grade as me. And, uh, you know, when you're, when you're in the eighth grade, you, you hang out with similar people with similar interests and likes. And, uh, and he said, oh, you're a musician. Well, you know, we're starting a band, me and my brother, my older brother, Bobby. Um, and, uh, and would you, you know, would you consider being in our band? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. Great. Um, and uh, he said, uh, OK, I said, I play guitar. He said, well, we don't need a guitar player. We need a bass player. And um, I said, oh, well, um, OK, let me uh, see what I can do about that. I went home. I asked my dad if I could sell the guitar that he bought me a couple of Christmases before. Uh, and I bought a bass guitar. And uh, I, I, I slapped together some amplifiers and, uh, and wound up in, in the band with the Rayo Brothers. About maybe six, eight months later, um, this guy, John, Buzzy, Buzzy Verno, um, came into the picture. And, and as well as these guys, as the Rayo Brothers dressed, the Verno Brothers, they, they, they shopped at Granny Takes a Trip, Trash and Vaudeville. Um, they had money to burn in, in high school. Uh, and and they, they looked like rock stars. Uh, and this is in 10th grade of, of high school um, or ninth grade, whatever. Anyway, long story even longer, um, John was a bass player and had an amplifier. And they fired me because they wanted Buzzy Verno to come in and play bass because he had a brand new amplifier and I didn't have an amplifier. Well, at 14 years old, I went home and I, I, I to this day, I re remember it like it was yesterday, walking home the three blocks from their house with my bass guitar uh, and crying. And when I got home, I cried my eyes out to my mom and said that they fired me because I didn't have an amplifier and I will show them. I'll, I'll, I'll show them that they made a big mistake firing me. Um, I'm still friendly with those guys today. Unfortunately, Buzzy Verno passed away about a year ago. Uh, John, uh, the younger uh, brother, uh, is, uh, he's, not a, he's still a musician, but he didn't, never made a career out of it. And the older brother never made a career out of music. I'm the only one that became successful. Um, and uh, yeah, I showed them. Well, that, yeah, that lights, you know, there's, you know, the, 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 my father used to tell me, 
the old story, you know, oh, everyone goes off to war, son and father out in the field, blah, blah, blah. All of a sudden, father says, I can't make it without you. Uh, and in the middle of nowhere, he breaks, the son breaks his leg, he can't go to war, and he's feeling bad, and everyone on that plane gets killed, son, leg gets better. You know, all those cliche yeah. stories that you put in there of going, well, you know, there's a meeting, and um, but... Hey, listen, you know, I, I, I have to tell you, if, I, if they hadn't fired me, um, and if I hadn't gone home and, and with, with all that determination, the same, the same level of determination that, that, that I had, if not more, when, when I watched that Ed Sullivan show, um, I was just like, I'm, I, I'm going to get really good at, at this instrument and, and I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to show them, I'm going to show them and myself that I can do this and God damn it, you know, um, Yeah. If you want to hear the entire interview via podcast or video, the links are in the description of this video. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music.